Hey y'all, this is Travis with Hoss Tools and this is a little segment we do called Garden Goodies. It's just a compilation of short videos that we shoot on our phone throughout the week as we're walking through the gardens, harvesting things, weeding, doing whatever we have to do to maintain a vegetable garden so we can grow our own food. I really hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions, I always put those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them for you. So we've been having a lot of people asking, when should I harvest my sweet potatoes? They'll send us pictures or post pictures on a row by row group <clears throat> of a uh, you know, really dense patch of sweet potato vines. Looks kind of like this right here. And they wanna know how they know when to harvest them. Do the plants die back? How do you know? Well, with sweet potatoes, they don't really die back necessarily when they're ready to harvest. And, a frost will kill them back, certainly, but you don't want to wait till that happens because then that may ruin some of your sweet potatoes in the ground if those freeze. So what you want to think about here is when you planted them and how long it's been since you planted them. Now most sweet potato varieties are going to take around 100, 110 days to start producing. So these right here, we got mostly Georgia Jets in here with a few of those purple sweet potatoes right there. These guys were planted in late May. Here it is now, you know, mid-August. So we think we've had June one month, July another month, and another half a month. So we're not even quite at 90 days yet. Now, I always like to wait to probably closer to 120 days or so on mine. And several reasons on that. I just seem to get a better harvest that way. You know, you would get some that have just gotten too big and, and kind of look a little runt. But, um, you know, not a big deal. But I just seem to get a better harvest if I wait about 120 days. And the other thing is, I just don't like to dig these things in the heat of summer. So I like to wait till the temperatures break a little bit before I get out here to dig all these sweet potatoes. Because I can't dig all these at one time. I think there's five rows in here because you can't see where the rows are at now. But... You know, I like to wait that temperature breaks and I can get a cool morning and get out here and uh, knock out a row or two at a time. You can see here we got a little bug pressure, something eating on the leaves. Not a huge deal. We don't <clears throat> eat the leaves. Some people do eat the leaves. And I don't spray these intentionally. Now, when I'm spraying my cucumbers with spinosad or liquid copper, take down or BT or something, if I got some extra in the tank, I will come over here and... Um, Put a little bit on these sweet potatoes and i'll probably do that in the next week or so kind of take care of whatever that is nipping on those leaves right there but uh i imagine the sweet potatoes down there are just fine now if you think you're getting close to that you know 110 120 days you can always you know pull back some of them vines and scratch around there see what you got just like we do with irish potatoes nothing wrong with doing that some folks will say that the production of the sweet potatoes really kicks up once the day lengths start getting a little shorter, which is happening now, but they haven't gotten significantly shorter yet. So that's another good reason to wait. You know, for me, on into September a little bit, those days get a little shorter. And, um, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard that a lot. If, if you believe that to be true or have experienced that, Definitely let me know. But with sweet potatoes, you know, there's not really a sign on the vines as to when to harvest them because these guys will grow and grow and grow during the hot months. But just think about when you planted them and how long it's been. And when you get close to that 120 day mark or so, it might be when it's time to start scratching around and seeing what you got. Once that garden bug bites you, you'll find yourself growing a different array of things. Now, vegetables has always been my specialty, growing things to eat. But later I have found myself liking to experiment with different things, and uh, this here is one of them that I experimented this year. Now, years ago in a previous life, I was in the landscape business, and we grew dahlias back then, and they always intrigued me. I love dahlias, so I decided I'd grow them again this year. Hadn't grown dahlias in oh, years and years. So I had my high tunnel here that the hurricane had got my plastic off of, so I ordered me some shade cloth, some 40% shade cloth, because dahlias do not like full sun, 
and I ordered me some dahlia seeds and this is what we got but sometimes it's not necessarily a good reason why you do things you just want to do it to see if you can and that's kind of what it was with days with me now the one of the things I do love about them is their vibrant colors I want you to look at that now what I like to grow is the mix because you're always surprised what you're gonna get there and I just love those colors of those days great for pollinators I got bees and all kind of stuff in here I was growing them to see if maybe I could, you know, use them for a cut flower, but the stems just didn't really work out to make a good cut flower. So what I've got is a good crop of pollinators and a good crop of beautiful flowers to enjoy. Now, dahlias normally are grown from tubulars. You buy these expensive tubulars, you plant them in the ground, and from year to year, your dahlias come back. But this is a different way to grow them. I grew these from seed, and I'm going to grow these as an annual. Now I'm not going to have a quite as strong a stem as what you would have on your tubulars, but I'm going to have a plenty of good blooms here. And this is all, I planted these in May. And you can see what kind of pretty blooms I got right here. So my advice to you is step outside the box sometimes. Try something a little different. You'll be amazed what you can do once that garden bug bites you. Well, I won't say that these eggplants had came to a screeching halt. Since it got real hot down here in South Georgia, but they have certainly started to decline in production a good bit. And that's what we see during the middle of the summer. These things were really, really kicking a month or so ago. You know, we was harvesting several, several buckets a week of nice eggplant off this 40 foot row here. We've got tied up with our Florida weave trellis. You can see some of those bottom so the plants there have started looking a little scraggly. Top growth looks okay. We're still getting a few fruits. See right here, a few on there. There's another one right there, but not what we were getting. And they'll just kind of slow down a little bit during this August time period, early September. The thing is, if you can keep them going, if you can just keep them alive, keep them somewhat healthy, once it does start to cool just a little bit these things will kick back up and get going it's just a matter of being able to keep the water to them keep them you know somewhat alive and uh they'll turn around for you and start producing some more once it cools off a little bit and i'm not saying you won't lose a plant or two that one there looks like it's in pretty bad shape and i probably should um Give these another little shot of fertilizer. I haven't fertilized them in a while. They were looking nice and green and producing, so I kind of backed off the fertilizer. Might want to give them a little shot here and uh, keep them looking nice and going so when we do get a little break in the temperature, they'll be ready to start producing a lot of eggplants for me. Same thing with peppers. You can see my peppers over there. You can see I need to weed that plot a little bit, but we've got some banana peppers bell pepper still making but the production has slowed a little bit on those compared to what it was say a month or so ago but if we can just keep them alive keep them going you'll get some nice pepper production and eggplant production once the temperatures break so if your nightshades like this peppers and eggplants start looking a little scraggly this time of year you know you don't have to ditch them you can pull them up if you're just tired of them if you can keep them alive, you'll be greatly rewarded once that temperature breaks a little bit. One of the biggest mistakes I see the beginning vegetable gardener make is not getting a soil test done when it starts gardening. Now, what you want to know is you want to know what the pH of your soil is. Now, pH stands for the negative hydrogen ion concentration of the soil but you really don't need to know all that what you need to know is what the ph of this soil is where you can adjust it and it's pretty easily done now here in the state of georgia the university of georgia has a lab and they do soil tests for the home gardener to tell you that information you can go by your extension agent get a bag and for ten dollars you can send that soil sample off on the bag has detailed instructions of how to take that soil sample. So you want to take that soil sample, carry it back, let them send it in, 
10 bucks and you will know what the pH of your soil is. Now, when they send you that soil sample back, they also give you detailed instructions on how to adjust it to the range where you would want. And normally for vegetable garden, we want it anywhere from 5.5 to 6.5. So there you have it, it's easy. Now, one of the biggest things I see is everybody's got one of those neighbors that knows everything and wants to give you advice all the time. I got one, his name is Clarence. And you know, when you're talking to your neighbor and you tell them you're having some trouble in your garden or you're gonna do this, he always wants to give you some free advice. Most of the time what they say is, what you need to do is add some lime. Do not ever add lime or sulfur to your soil to adjust the pH until you know what it is. Unless your neighbor is a soil scientist, do not take his advice. Leave Clarence and tell him thank you for his kind information and go get you a soil sample done and know exactly what you're doing. And if you do that, you will be treating your soil very kindly and you will not have any problems. The, uh, the soil structure will be good, your nutrients will be available to the plant and all will be good. Well, once it cools off a little bit later this afternoon, I got to get in here and cut some okri. And we did a video a week or so ago showing you the difference in production between this jambalaya, the shorter okra here, versus those four rows of kind of the heirloom slash open pollinated varieties. And today I not necessarily want to talk about the production, I want to talk about the plant height. So everybody's got their own ways they like to grow okra and, and people ask why do you you know trim the bottom leaves on your okra and we did videos on that and we like our okra to be easy to harvest we like to come in here and have all the pods there at the top we got to look for them and uh, we just pluck them off cut them off right there it makes it quick and easy to get in here and harvest them we don't get our arms and legs stung up so bad when we're picking them it just makes it easier to do it that way so the the jambalaya okri we got here is about i'd say four and a half five foot tall and producing like crazy and these are all planted at the same time from transplants why don't you look at some of these other varieties see that star david okri right there that stuff is on up there eight foot tall maybe even nine foot tall in some places silver queen is is maintaining its height probably better than any of these op varieties your red burgundy and your cow horn there seem to be pretty equal on height now this is all personal preference but but in my opinion i don't care as much for okra that gets real real tall like that now there are solutions to this a lot of people come in and cut the uh you know apical merry stem or that top portion of the plant out when it gets four or five foot tall and then make a nice bushy plant and i would highly recommend that if you're growing the star david variety it's a real tasty okra variety but it just seems to get much taller than these other ones so i would say you know when they get four foot tall or so cut the top out of these because they're going to get tall pretty quick on you and uh i don't know about y'all but i'm not getting on a ladder to cut okra so these plants here may get cut down pretty soon the reason i like the jambalaya okra not only the production is that the plants stay small so my harvest window is a lot longer growing them like i like to to grow them here you know these things they're not putting on a ton of vertical growth they're just putting out okra and just putting out okra i mean look at this look at this one right here i don't know if you can see it if i pan around here anytime we pick these you're going to pick at least three or four pods of okra off each plant which is just awesome production i mean that's just off the top and if we would let this thing bush out it, it'd be amazing how much okra you could pick off of it but we just like to pick them off the top so three or four pods at the top you know versus some of these others you know we got only a couple pods look at this cow horn here which is a great variety we just got two there we can pick so that's what I'm talking about when we get double, sometimes triple the production out of the jambalaya. And a lot of people always ask about how tall okra will get. Well, okra will get as tall as you let it grow. I mean, this jambalaya will eventually get eight or nine foot tall. But the vertical growth on it is a lot more delayed than some of these other varieties, which means, in my opinion, your harvest window is longer and just makes it easier 
to pick. I, with some of those that are real tall there, I have to grab that stalk and pull it down to be able to get them okri pods way at the top there. Whereas this, right at you know waist chest level, makes it real easy to get in there, pick it real quick. So, just wanted to kind of show y'all the differences there between the height on different okri varieties that were planted at the same time. So what is the fastest growing warm season cover crop you can plant in your vegetable garden? Is it buckwheat like we see right here? Well, buckwheat grows pretty fast. You can see there it's filling in good and it's gonna keep any weeds from popping up in there, really help our weed pressure out. Buckwheat's one of the faster ones, but it's not the fastest. Let me show you the fastest right here fastest i've ever seen or grown and probably the reason why it's my favorite is sorghum sedan grass and it's so fast that you can't even really see that sun hemp that i scattered in there too now we went with about a two to one ratio here of sorghum sedan grass to sun hemp well that sorghum sedan grass is just growing so fast that it's out competing the sun hemp there now the sun hemp may poke up through there at some point in time but right now it's just a dense, dense mat of sorghum sedan grass. And this stuff is so pretty and it adds so much biomass to your soil. But uh, one of the primary benefits for me is weed suppression. And if you've got some weed problems, you know, especially this time of year when it's hot and weeds can thrive, this stuff right here planted real dense like this can really really suppress those weeds kind of break that cycle a little bit and help you out a lot in the long term this stuff it's only been about a week and a half since we planted this stuff and you can see it's just lush out there a few tiny little gaps but those should fill in as this foliage develops a little more this is about um, six or eight inches tall if you were to pull them blades up all the way and uh, we'll let it grow to about one and a half two foot tall before we mow it the first time but look at that right there i mean even weeds like pigweed and nutgrass and real fast growing weeds can't grow as fast as this stuff can so if you got weed issues this summer if you live in a hot area where you can't really grow anything else you need to be planting some sorghum sedan grass to take care of that soil Keep that weed pressure down well my cover crop of iron clay peas has took a little bit of a beating we had a decent little storm come through here a few days ago i don't know maybe it was a week ago wind got blowing pretty bad and um these things were all nice and tall they all kind of look like these here on the end and for some reason some of these in the middle here just kind of got beat down by some of that wind and heavy rain you can see in there and i think also this is just a hypothesis i haven't seen them doing this but i think my cats may be getting in here chasing rats when i ain't looking there ain't nothing wrong with that i I'm much enjoy them taking care of the rat population around here but i think i'm gonna have to mow this down and till it under sooner than i was wanting to i was gonna wait till these things started flowering a little bit and they aren't showing any signs of flowering yet these here on the end looking nice and green like i said i'm guessing the wind was blowing you know from that white house here towards me and uh these on the end just kind of were buffering everything those over there just kind of got blown over beat down by the hard rain whatever so looks like i'm gonna have to come in here mow these down till them in a little sooner than I want them. Not a big deal. We've got some good good growth there. I'm sure they have fixed plenty of nitrogen in the soil. We got some more iron clay peas planted over here. Showed you on a YouTube video a week or so ago. Uh, we were making a cocktail with sorghum sedan grass and iron clay peas here. And man, this plot here just looks lush. There's a little bit of gap in the middle there and that's where I had a lot of debris from the corn stalks kind of accumulated in the middle there and so i guess my seed just didn't come up as good in there but on the sides here man that is nice and dense and thick 
you can see the sorghum sedan grass there and then you can see the iron clay peas in the middle there and i've never tried this combination before but it looks like they're growing at a pretty equal pace now at some point that sorghum sedan grass will get taller than the peas but the peas should get a pretty decent size before that happens so the um jury's still out a little bit on this cocktail here but so far very very happy with it and looks like it's going to be a promising combination especially for weed suppression in this plot right here those over there have done their job take those down we still got at least another month month and a half before we're going to be putting any cool season transplants in the ground so I may turn around and uh, put me some buckwheat right here, just something real fast, just kind of hold that plot over until we're ready to put some cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, some of that good stuff in there.